My name is Marco Zarbin. I work at the New Jersey Medical School, Rutgers University, and I've been using Micropulse Laser for about 10 years. Micropulse refers to a way of delivering laser energy in which the energy is applied over a very short interval in comparison to continuous wavelength energy where the energy is delivered throughout the duration uh, that we're applying the laser spot. And the value of using a Micropulse delivery mode is that the temperature increase is confined to the target tissue and doesn't spread to adjacent tissues. The value of this different way of delivering energy is that we confine the effects of the energy to the target tissue without killing the target tissue. Creating this near-death response in the retinal pigment epithelium stimulates the retinal pigment epithelium to produce a variety of different cytokines, all of which are helpful in reducing retinal edema and promoting neuronal survival. The way I've incorporated Micropulse laser treatment into my practice is that it has essentially completely replaced conventional laser treatment. I use it uh, exclusively uh, for treating macular edema when I'm using laser to treat macular edema or other causes of subretinal fluid like central serous retinopathy. I can adjust the power and the delivery modality with the same laser to apply panretinal photocoagulation um, in a conventional mode if I want to. Uh, and the raster delivery system enables me to see precisely where the laser treatment spots uh, have been applied, which is very helpful. I think Micropulse laser has an important role in the area of pharmacotherapy. For people that have extrafoveal leaks, uh, where there is spread of edema into the center of the retina, that's an easy decision to opt to use a Micropulse laser. It's very safe. Uh, it doesn't need to be repeated every month. Uh, it's painless. It doesn't create any symptomatic scotomata. For people that have shown an incomplete response to anti-VEGF therapy, I think adding Micropulse laser treatment is a very smart move where you can get consolidation and possibly further improvement in the patient's edema, not to mention a more long-lasting suppression of the recovery of edema. I think the most important thing uh, to emphasize to patients, apart from the fact that it's a painless and very safe system, is the tempo of recovery of the, of the retina that we should expect after treatment with this laser. I tell the patients that they're probably going to need about three treatments, each separated uh, by about three months. Don't expect their vision to get better overnight. That's not going to happen. Depending on the patient's starting visual acuity, I may even emphasize to them that the purpose of the treatment is not to improve their vision, but actually just to stabilize it. So the discussion of how their vision will be affected in the long term is influenced by whether they already have experienced some degree of visual loss or not. When physicians first start using micropulse laser, the tendency they are going to have is to undertreat the patient. The rule of thumb with a micropulse laser is that if you truly are at subthreshold energy delivery levels, the best, most robust response you can have is with high density treatment. We know that that's true from preclinical experiments, which show that the amount of cytokines, such as heat shot protein, production increases when you go to a high density of treatment. And we know it from small but controlled clinical trials, which have compared low density to high density treatment, showing that the high density treatment leads to a recovery of visual acuity that's comparable to that that was observed in the registration trials for anti-VEGF agents like ranibizumab. I think the cases that are probably most attractive at the beginning of a surgeon's experience with a micropulse are those that have focal extrafoveal leakage in the case of diabetic macular edema. The reason I say that is that the leaks are all extrafoveal, they're easy to identify, you can apply the treatment grid with great confidence to the correct location, even without a fluorescent angiogram, and you can also undergo the experience of retreating that area and proving to yourself that you can retreat the same area with micropulse on multiple occasions without hurting the patient. The main benefit of using the Texcel laser, in my experience, first of all, is the capacity to do micropulse delivery, and secondly, the raster delivery system. This allows me to be absolutely confident of how many spots I'm applying and where I'm applying them. It gives me the confidence to do high density treatment because I know where I've treated because of the raster pattern. The wavelength of 577 nanometers has been demonstrated uh, to be a safe and effective wavelength compared to the older wavelength of 810 nanometers. I'm a 
full-time university professor and we train uh, 15 ophthalmology residents. The residents love the MicroPulse delivery system for several reasons. First, the raster delivery gives them the confidence to know where they've treated. Second, the absence of pain that makes it a much easier experience for them and their patients. And third, uh, it's very user-friendly device. It doesn't require a great deal of training in order to become very confident in knowing how to uh, set the appropriate settings. If I had to describe MicroPulse technology in three words, it would be first, that it is effective, second, that it is safe, and third, that it is extremely well tolerated by patients.